Well, a very good afternoon. Thanks for clicking on to today's edition of, uh, well, it's a long-range European and North American outlook today. Uh, if you checked out both the videos and write-ups for Europe and the United States yesterday, I looked at the picture over the next uh, week or so. So, plenty of information there. I don't have really any changes to what I've said yesterday. So, really, I wanted to spend today focusing a bit on the longer range of some of the, the bigger picture. And we're going to look at the... Uh, what is a very weak solar cycle 24 and uh, some interesting developments over the past week or two uh, with the sunspot cycle and uh, I'll show you that in just a second but let's have a quick look here um, at the, the sunspot numbers and the cycle 23 24 over the past few years this is going back actually to the mid 90s and of course we had a uh, uh, very very weak minimum which went on around the 2019 winter of course that was a very very noteworthy winter for cold and excuse me snow on both sides of the Atlantic and you can see here quite there's always a great correlation between the solar cycle and Earth's temperatures and look at back to 2019 it bottomed out right around that winter so uh, there is little wonder why it was such a benchmark winter back then but you can also see the correlation as to why europe europe's winter back last year was as warm as it was because in fact the solar cycle albeit the weakest in about 100 years by the way of course you notice here that the solar cycle 23 peaked right around the turn of the millennium into the early 2000s we've seen that uh, solar max the uh, recent solar max of 23 you can see the difference here how much lower is compared to what we've seen back then and of course solar cycle 22 was even stronger so uh, you can see what's going on here we're having that gradual decline and despite the, the fact that we've got a max which i believe strongly influenced the westerly qbo very strong westerly winds in the uh, polar stratosphere which stopped the north atlantic blocking we, we did see the pacific blocking we did of course see the coldest winter since 96 for the united states but you can see in a, a large sense with the solar correlation why winter was a non uh, across the european continent we had that peak right around the turn but notice now that we're starting to see a fairly sharp downward trend so this was the peak back around february this is where we're at now and in response to that look at the sun you can see here that back even on july 6th we had a fair amount of activity uh, sunspots across the, the disc of the sun look at it now it's literally silent at the moment uh, notice here very quickly the difference in temperatures this is 2009 around this time back in 2009 we had warm water over the North Pacific, the Atlantic, with the cold pool centered over the central North Atlantic. And I think that was a big player this year in seeing the warmer weather here across the continent. Of course, we have seen a very warm first seven months of 2014. Here comes the El Nino back in 2009. Look at the difference now. It's almost identical. You've got warm North Pacific. You've got a warm North Atlantic with the cold over the central part of the North Atlantic here. Very, very warm surrounding in the UK. Of course, it's been a very warm summer up until now. And here comes the El Nino coming on. Why am I showing you that? Temperatures this year so far have been very cold across the United States. Look at 2009. It was a benchmark cold summer across the United States. The big difference uh, between uh, the United States and Europe is Europe's warmer this time around compared to 2009. But this is the United States for the first seven months, or the first, sorry, six months of the uh, of this year. And look at how chilly it's been across the majority of the, uh, the United States, really from the plains on eastward. In terms of the models, it's predicting a Madoki-style El Nino by the time we reach the winter season. What does that mean exactly? Well, it means that we've got a central base Pacific El Nino. So that would correlate with a colder, not warmer, a lot of people can sometimes be deceived thinking El Nino produces warm winters. Depends what kind of winter we have or what kind of El Nino we have. A central based Pacific El Nino, like we've seen back in 2009, was a cold winter, very cold winter for North America and Europe. Notice here that we've got the same idea with the JAMS type model. It has the warmest waters over the central Pacific. And in turn, 
Look at the temperatures for the upcoming winter. Cold across the eastern and particularly southeastern United States and a cold UK and Ireland as well. Correlates beautifully with a Madoki style El Nino. Look at the CFSV2. Almost identical to what the uh, Jams Tech has. Blocking over the North Atlantic. Of course that correlates very well with the low sunspot cycle which slows down the westerly winds over the, the stratospheric level of the polar atmosphere and in turn it may actually uh, flip around completely producing more easterlies which in turn leads to stronger stratospheric warming events we didn't really see that last year because of the solar max we tend to get a stronger westerly qbo i want to show you this chart here very important very interesting these are the 50 millibar or 50 hpa zonal winds and notice here that it's been predominantly positive so therefore westerly stopping Europe from having a cold winter last year and it's also meant that it's been a very warm 2014 predominantly positive stronger westerlies no real easterly wind at the stratosphere around the pole which means less blocking and less stratospheric warming events really since uh, last July which is very very interesting to see but you notice the downward trend here Look at that there, so it's been going downwards towards the orange, which means it's more of an easterly QBO, which sets the scene for a more of a North Atlantic block this upcoming winter. And you can see here the correlation when you've got an easterly QBO in the winter time, it leads to colder over North America, it leads to that block over the Davis Straits in Greenland and colder across the western half of Europe. Uh, a favorable westerly QBO means a uh, colder eastern united states warmer across the uh, west and the plains and of course warmer across europe that was what we had last year but all signs in the solar activity the el nino the sea surface temperature similarity as well is all pointing to more easterly qbo this upcoming winter which to me suggests a strong chance of cold winters coming back this upcoming year for Europe as well as the United States. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day and please check out the write-up for more detail. Bye for now.